What's up team? It is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero, and in this video, I want to share a secret that I believe is going to help you learn to code faster. It's going to help you it's going to give you the knowledge to be able to go out and learn any programming language you want and potentially build anything you want. So let's jump right into it, team. All right, team, it is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero. And for those of you that are interested, if you want a hat like this or a hat similar to this, check out writecodedrinkcoffee.com where you can find hats, mugs, stickers, and more to come. All right, team, so let's get into it. When I was first starting out learning to code, I, I didn't set out to learn to code. I set out to learn to build web pages. I was on the internet and there was new web pages popping up everywhere and I started to see some really cool stuff and I said, man, I want to build something like that. And that set me off on the path. And so I found out that I needed to learn HTML. So I set out to learn HTML and I learned HTML and I could put together a web page. And then the question was, how do I put an image on this web page? Now I got to go find the the, the tags for images and then how do I put a form so I go find the tags for forms well I saw this one website and the navigation bar was on the was on the side of the screen how do I do that so I go out looking for that and I have to learn about frames and then I learn about tables because this is how websites were laid out back then the point of this is programming languages are just a tool HTML is a tool to take a document and put it on the internet so somebody else can see it and they can read this document. CSS is a way to style that document so it looks visually appealing. You can you can add colors and you can group items together in, in, in little sections and modules and all kinds of things. You can play videos, you can play music. Then you get to JavaScript and JavaScript gives you a way to add logic. So if you want to have a calculator on your web page or if you want to show people the weather, that means you have to go out to some place on the internet or some sort of sensor somewhere, maybe a weather sensor somewhere. You have to get some information. You have to get the temperature, whether the sun's up or whether the sun's down. If you want to display time on your web page, you have to get the time from somewhere. Are you going to get the time from the user's local computer or are you going to get the time from a server somewhere? These are all things that web pages and web applications typically do. And behind all of those things is some sort of programming language. Each language was designed to do a specific thing, but they are all very similar. Every programming language, for the most part, they all have the same basic constructs. They have variables, strings, which are a series of letters, numbers, which are integers. They have floats, which are decimal point numbers. They have booleans, which are true or false values. Every programming language has those things. So the question when it comes to learning a programming language is what do I actually need to do and what is the best way to do that? There are generally accepted practices um, that are based on what people have done in the past and then just standards that have been set. So for instance, in the case of web development, we use HTML, CSS and JavaScript, maybe not necessarily because they're the best things to, to use for, for web development, but as it stands right now, all web pages are served up pretty much the same way and they're all looked at pretty much the same way. A web server sends a page to a browser, which is literally just a, a long string of code. The browser interprets that code and shows us some stuff on the screen. So the best way to learn to code, like if you really want to learn to code, is to just decide what it is you want to build right at the beginning. What if 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 you're learning to code because you want to go get a job, the best thing to do is decide what type of job you want to have right at the beginning. How do I decide what type of job I want? Well, there's many different factors in that. Is it just the money? Do you want a job where you're just going there for the money? You don't, it doesn't matter whether you like the job or not. You don't care if you're miserable or not. All you want is a whole bunch of money. Then you would go out and you would learn a programming language that paid the most. If that's the thing that you want to do and you set your sights on it and you say, I'm going to learn this thing no matter what, then you can go out and you can learn that thing. But I wouldn't focus all of my attention specifically directly on one particular programming language. I would focus more on the concepts behind why that language is being used. All programming languages are the same. They all have the same basic mechanism, but they're tools. They're, each tool has a specific purpose. Some languages are better at math just because they evolved in a math community. Some languages are better at text and parsing text and reading text and reorganizing text. Some languages are better at storing large file format. Uh, and, and there's all different kinds of things, all different kinds of languages for all different kinds of things. But where we get messed up, a lot of us, is we set out to learn a specific programming language instead of asking ourselves what exactly it is that we want to do. 
if we want to write financial applications, then we would look out and say, well, what kind of financial applications do I want to write? Where are these applications going to be used? What companies need someone who can work on these type of things? If working for a company is something you want to do, if you want to just build your own application that you can put online and you can sell to the world, you need to know what it is you're building, why you're building it, who you're building it for, and then that's going to dictate how you build it. So a good example would be, let's say you're making a online financial management applications, uh, application to manage your bills or something, right? So you're going to need a web page that people can find on the internet. So that's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. You got to build a web page. Now, what's going to happen when they get to the web page? I want them to be able to log in. I want them to be able to enter their information and I want them to be able to enter transactions, things, you know, when money when they get money they can enter a transaction when they spend money on something they can enter enter a transaction there well how are you going to store all this information now some may say hey you can store this information in a text file you can store it in a comma separated value you can store it inside of a spreadsheet it doesn't really matter cuz at the, right now you're just trying to figure out what it is you're going to build so let's say for instance you decide that you're just going to store this information in a bunch of different text files well, if you got one user, that's cool. If you got two users, that's cool. If you got 10 users, that's cool. Now you start to run into some issues. How do I determine who's logged on and what information they get to see? How, 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 how do I back up all of these text files that I'm saving for all these people? Or what if one day I want to make this like a, a social site where different people can see what other people are saving money on or what other people are spending money on? Uh, how do I do that? Right. And at some point you may determine, hey, I need a database. Well, if I'm going to have this application and it's going to be running on the Internet and I need a database, how do I do that? And then you run into the, the instance of, well, I may need a server for this. And this is all stuff that you're figuring out. Here's the thing that we all miss is that every company out there that has an application on the Internet or some sort of piece of software or something, it didn't start out as we see it right now. It started out as a small idea and they built it. And as more people came, they had to change things and fix things and fix bugs. And as the workload became more and more and more, they had to hire more people. And now more people come on to maintain these things. And as they're hiring people to maintain things, they have to compartmentalize. I need I need someone who understands this particular framework we're using because all of our application is written inside of this framework. And they'll put up a job ad and that job ad will say, we need someone who understands Angular or we need someone who understands React or we need someone who understands Node.js or whatever technology it is, to be honest. But I believe what happens to a lot of people is they set up down this path. They go, I want to learn to code. And then they go, what's the best language to learn to code? And they go out onto to the Internet and they watch all these videos and they see, oh, the number one language is Python. And then they set off and they go to, to, to learn Python. So they go and they find a tutorial. The tutorial is about Python and they learn the Python programming language. And then later on, they go, what can I build with this? When that was the question they should have been asking at the very beginning. Because if you're asking what you're going to build, what you're going to be doing, then that makes you dig even deeper into the programming language. Maybe the tutorial you took doesn't cover everything. A lot of tutorials I see now are project based because they make us feel good about ourselves. We say we find the tutorial and it says, hey, you're going to learn this programming language. and You're going to build a to do application. Well, we're super focused on building the application. So when we go into the tutorial, we're following all of the instructions and we're learning a ton of stuff along the way. And we get to the end, we have this to do application and then we go, well, I want to go build this other application that does this thing. And while we're out there trying to build our other application, we're constantly thinking about what did I do when I was building this to do application instead of understanding the core fundamentals of programming and programming in general and what programming is meant to do for us. Again, the number one thing when it comes to programming is solving a particular problem. There's something that we want to do and we need a computer to help us do it. What language is going to best help us achieve that outcome? And by sticking with that, then it becomes easier to learn any programming language. And you'll soon realize that if you set out to build something and you're learning one programming language and you have to dig into the language and figure out all of the different methods and functions and all the different things that you can do in that language when you go to build something else that requires a completely different language or maybe you get a job that requires a completely different language or a completely different framework or, or something just totally different from what you've done before 
you can look back and say, well, when I built this application, what I did was I wrote a function to do this and I wrote a function to do that. And then I had these two functions talk to each other to produce this particular data structure. And then I returned that and that was the result in this application. If you understand that, then you can do that in any application. It just takes time, right? You learn the other, you earn the, you learn the other programming language and then you go out and you say okay all right well when i did this in javascript this is how i did it how can i implement that here or is that a better way and now you know well if i wrote a function if i wrote two functions that did this thing in this program i in this programming language i should be able to write two functions that do this thing in this programming language because the mechanisms are the same variables integers booleans floats and strings that's that's the i, I would guess the five most common things and then some programming languages have more some programming languages have less but the best way to learn any programming language super fast and be able to learn multiple programming languages is to understand the core fundamentals right every programming language has the same mechanisms and then they are just tools to achieve some sort of end result all right team i'm your biggest fan the real casadero i hope you found that helpful useful informative and i hope it helps you along the way to becoming the person you want to become and doing the things you want to do again if you like this hat and you want a hat just like it check out writecodedrinkcoffee.com until next time team i'm your biggest fan and i'm rooting for you